What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, a flu test, or a test for any other virus, I hope you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues and no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Virus Update for Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. You have clicked on to today's virus update. What is the virus update, you might ask? Well, COVID started back in 2020, but viruses existed long before COVID. One thing has changed since COVID. We have never seen a virus quite like COVID. In fact, COVID can go on to develop long COVID and do many different things that you may not like. In a moment, we're going to talk about children with COVID. Yet, diabetes can be a risk of COVID, as can many other things. You need a place where you can turn to to get the latest information on COVID and other viruses daily. Now, we used to do this every day. We do this as needed nowadays, or if there's a slow news day, you won't see a video from me, or if I'm busy with something else and don't have time to do a video, well then, obviously there wouldn't be an update on that day, but I do it as much as I possibly can, and my goal is to report to you the news and data the way it should be reported, unfiltered, none of this minimizing nonsense like the media and the government have led you to believe. I mean, quite frankly, if you listen to the media and the government, you would think it's all over and no risk to you, and you wouldn't be informed with what's going on with other viruses as well. You may get a five-second clip here and there. So if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell to be notified of my latest videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let's try for 200 like button hits today. The more people that hit that like button, the more this video is going to get pushed throughout the YouTube algorithm. Share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. Alrighty, we do have some news stories today. Then we are going to take a look at some weekly data from BNO News. We're going to look at my website real quickly. We're going to do some other data, and we're going to take a look at Walgreens maybe some wastewater data, and maybe some state data. As Starting off, though, with COVID in kids and children, COVID is tied to a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. This is not a good thing. We have known that it has been increasing the risk of diabetes in adults, and now we're finding more evidence that it can do it in kids as well. And I can assure you, this study will make it to my site, as will a lot of studies. We're going to be We'll talk about my site in a little bit. I'm going to be doing some work on that this evening. Whooping cough has hit California. And yes, the whooping cough outbreak there is surging to pre-pandemic levels, as is everywhere in the United States. And the one takeaway from this article is the CDC reports a 10-year high in whooping cough cases with more than 17 thousand reports so far. I could have sworn just last week that number was 16,000, but now they're saying 70, maybe it was 17,000 last week. Either way, the point is it's getting up there and we do know, just like with the COVID virus, there's a lot of people that do not even bother to get tested for these random viruses. Who knew someone? Let me know down below. Did you know someone who was actually getting tested for a virus before COVID? He didn't hear much talk about it, but I mean, it was a thing, but you didn't hear as much talk about being tested for, quote, a virus until COVID came around. And well, now, the, now it's a big thing. All right. This is getting kind of interesting. And this may be something that turns into a seasonal thread, I guess you want to call it, on my site. We'll have to see. It seems like illness is hitting the NHL, and the Maple Toronto Maple Leafs are being hit really hard right now. Back in the beginning of baseball season, COVID uh, was hitting one of the teams really hard. I want to say it was Detroit. I don't fully remember which team it was, but I think believe I started taking a record of uh, MLB. It became incomplete, and then we just didn't hear anything more about it for a while. But now there seems to be, quote, flu-like illness has floored a couple of Toronto Maple Leafs players over the past few days, and apparently there were more that remained unnamed, and several of them continued on playing while sick, which, as we all know, playing while sick is not a good thing. Number one, it can infect more people, and number two, you need as much rest as possible when you are sick, so we'll have to keep an eye on this. Could it be flu-like illness is the new term for, quote, COVID, and they just can't say COVID? I don't know. All right, speaking of illness, 
this is not good. This is a rapidly evolving situation that I don't like whatsoever. New California reports four new human cases of H5N1 bird flu, taking the total this month to 11. So there's now been 11 H5N1 human cases just this month, and we're only 15 days into the month of October. I'm really concerned at the way this is spreading. Or has it gone human to human yet? I don't know. I can't answer that. But there's definitely a lot of questions that need to be answered, and I hope we start to get some answers soon before it becomes too late and H5N1 becomes a pandemic of its own. All right, let's take a look at that BNO weekly update, and for the most part, it's all around good news here. U.S. weekly COVID update, new cases. Get this. Now, mind you, the actual number is much higher. Wastewater would suggest it's higher, even with dropping wastewater levels. We know there's a lot of people that don't test. We know these lovely at-home tests. I always use this box here as a reference because it really is a reference to the fact that so many people that use the at-home test just don't even bother to report it. New cases, 70,360. The average is 102,679. That's down by 19,900 63. That's a big drop. In the hospital, 3,488. That's down by 699. In the ICU, that's down by 95. Hey, new deaths, 1,189. It's another week over 1,000, but they are starting to come down. I can feel it. In just a few weeks, I think there's going to be a week below 1,000 deaths during our in-between waves, which the next wave will probably start at some point, maybe in November. I don't know. Mind you, Halloween could be a super spreader around the United States. Halloween parties and XEC slowly going up, that could be the thing that gets it going. Note, they say, limited data, and the average number of uh, deaths is 1,243. That's down by 11, but I think that's going to drop even more unless some states report a ton of deaths this week. All right, more than 1,200 new deaths were reported in the U.S. this week, the ninth week in a row with over a thousand deaths. New cases, however, continue to drop nationwide, and that's a good thing. The rapidly dropping cases mean hospitalizations will drop more, and deaths will eventually drop more as well. But remember, with hospitalizations, only 32.4% of hospitals in the U.S. submitted COVID data this week, the lowest since the end of mandatory reporting on May 1st. This means actual case numbers and hospitalizations are substantially higher than reported, which is why I've been saying that though they may be low right now, we will probably see them get inflated to closer to real numbers. Probably, We'll probably never see the exact real number, but much closer to real numbers come November when mandatory reporting is set to resume. All right, this is the ninth week in a row with more than 1,000 new COVID deaths in the U.S. It's also the 239th week in a row with more than 400 deaths, or 1.2 million deaths in total. Yeah, that's quite a few deaths. It's been a long pandemic. So far this year, more than 5.7 million COVID cases have been reported in the U.S., causing at least 464,050 hospitalizations in partial data and 46,000 321 deaths. That's, yeah, that, that death number, it's pretty high this year. And, uh, the hospitalization number, if you don't think that's pandemic levels, I don't know what to tell you because that is way more hospitalizations than we do for flu, and that's with a ton of hospitalizations missing. We don't know what the real number is. It's probably, it's well north of 500,000. I can tell you that. All right, here's my uh, website here, datareport.info. We talked about what is, um, going on with children and diabetes, but I just wanted to remind you, we have a whole archive of different um, studies, and I'm going to be trying to catch up this evening on this, and of course the COVID positive archive, as you see here, and there's a few things I'm behind on there, of course, the stuff that happened before the site started and back into the early days, well, who knows when I'll ever get to actually add all that maybe one or two each week, and eventually I'll get caught up maybe in a couple of years. Yeah, it's been a, and like I said, it's been a long pandemic, but just a reminder, my site is datareport.info. You can find studies, you can find news about other viruses, other people contribute stuff as well. We can see here, Masked Man put some, this is really interesting, Masked Man, and I'll have to take a look at this for today because I was at work all morning, what should endemic COVID preparedness look like? He put an update in that thread 
Always good stuff from him. Steve posts great stuff. Check out my website for all this stuff. And, well, if you've got a doctor's appointment coming up and you're having a problem and you have a feeling it's linked to COVID, check here. We have a lot of studies. Are all studies that have ever been posted on here? No. Will that ever happen? I don't know, but I try and add as many as possible. You're going to see these the study section rapidly grow. All right, moving on because we have a lot more things to get to. Taking a look, now we're actually going to skip over heat-related illnesses, and I think we may be done with that for the season. We'll have to see. National allergy map, 35% of the country is in low to medium status. We can see here uh, anything that's high or even just above medium, it's confined to the south at this point. Everywhere else is really doing fine. I think we will continue to show this product, though, this map, because it is important, and we are definitely going to show this all year round, because at any time of the year, air quality can go bad, and when this comes up, you're going to see here, yet again, it's the West Coast that's having problems. No, we don't want to see that. It's the West Coast that's, you know, those wildfires. There are so many dry areas in the United States a wildfire can really occur at any point in time, and that can lead to bad air quality and, you know, anything else. You can have train de all kinds of different things that can happen in the United States leading to bad air qualities. But the east and the northeast and the Great Lakes are doing really well. Just some minor bad air qualities down in Florida, also down in Louisiana and Texas. Want to learn more about climate and weather? You can do that over on my Climate Data Report X account. And you can also go to, let's click on this, you can also go to my other YouTube channel, Climate Data Report. I posted a video there yesterday. There'll probably be another video later in the week. I'm going to try for two to three videos on this channel a week just to update what's going on with the weather situation in the United States and, hey, maybe something big's going on around the world. All right, Philadelphia on Sunday, because remember, we did not do a video yesterday. 802 EMS calls. Uh, for whatever reason, they posted today's number twice. 798 EMS calls were reported on Monday. Let's do a live look in with Montgomery County, if we can. No, it still hasn't been working this afternoon. I don't know why. Chester County has been really busy this afternoon. I've been watching a ton of calls, and yeah, not as busy as it was earlier, but boy, look at all these heart problems. One, two, three calls for heart problems. That's never a good thing. Respiratory difficulty, that's not a good thing either. Let's take a look at Pennsylvania, and I do apologize in advance. I need to refresh this. I actually just remembered it is Pennsylvania Day. See, I was out and about all day long doing different deliveries for different apps, and, you know, you forget about things. And good news for Pennsylvania. Take a look at this. No change statewide or decreasing. Nowhere is it increasing in the orange, and nowhere is it a large increase, but we're also not seeing a large decrease. But look at this. Pennsylvania is really dropping at this time. My home state is finally getting better. Let's do a look in now, and we have to refresh this as well, at what's going on with Canada. The COVID-19 viral activity level is moderate. Flu A is low. The viral activity level for RSV is low at this time. Taking a look at what is going on with Walgreens for today. And this is the weekly update. To my surprise, Walgreens actually did come in yesterday. We could have done a video yesterday, but eh, I had a doctor's appointment. I had to work it even. There just wasn't time in between. And, well, we have more complications later in the week. I'll explain that at the end of the video. Uh, taking a look at the national positivity rate for COVID, current week is 17%. The prior week was 18.4%. That's a difference of down 1.4%. Uh, total tests, 5,249 versus 6,492. That is a very low testing number. I don't know if it's the lowest of the year, but it's low. The positivity rate dropping this much is really impressive, especially considering our lowest positivity rates tend to usually be in the spring, but here we are. We're in the fall. All right, let's take a look at a few states. I think we'll do, do about five states, maybe more. Connecticut. The positivity rate for COVID is 20.4%. The prior week was 17.4%. That's a difference of up 3%. Your testing went down, though. 49 versus 69. So because of that, that would be a reason why your positivity rate went up. Let's take a look at what's going on in New York State. And good news all around here. 30.6% positivity rate. The prior week was 34.3%. That's a difference of down 3.7%. Total test, 219 
versus 306. So, yes, that is a legitimate drop. But we do see more states that are in the red. Why? Well, Nebraska, 33.3% positivity rate. The prior week was 15.2%. And you can see here that uh, with that, that is up by 18.2%. Total test, 27 versus 33. Now, I should remind you here real quickly. Any state that is listed in dark red, that means increasing positivity rate. Green, well, as you know, green is usually a good thing. You know, such as money. Like when the stock market goes up, it's usually in the green. When the stock market drops, it's in the red. Well, right here, lowering positivity rate is a good thing. So that's what green is. These dark green states, like such as Ohio, let's click on that one. It means things are improving. And Ohio's positivity rate is 15.4%. That's a huge decrease by 15.6%. And the previous week was 31%. Total test, 136 versus 158. What is going on in Washington State? Now, Washington State's up again, but your testing is now dropping. 21% versus 17.4%. That's up by 3.6%. Total test, 81 versus 109. Let's do two more states. We'll do two big ones. California, you are a very populated state. I wish you did more testing. You just don't. 19.9% positivity rate versus 19.3%. That's up by 0.6%. Total test, 211 versus 243. Florida, the positivity rate is 16% versus 14.6%. Difference of off. 1.4%. Total tests, 325 versus 698. It's very understandable why testing is down in Florida. You just had Milton. A lot of people got displaced. Uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, had to evacuate their homes. So, yeah, obviously not as many people got tested in Florida last week. And a lot of people, millions of people lost power. Florida, it makes sense that your testing is way down. Maybe it'll be back up next week. I honestly don't know. Alrighty. Moving on now, there is one more thing that we can look at with Walgreens, and that is the flu positivity rate, which for the United States is 0.37%. 5,266 people went out to get a flu A or flu B test. More Walgreens data again tomorrow. All right, taking a look at the latest variant of COVID, and at this time it is the KP3.1.1 variant at 57.2%. XEC is at 10.7% at this time. New Jersey reports 251 hospitalizations and 12 people on a ventilator. Discharges 25 and in the ICU at this time 31. New York State for today 876 cases. I believe this is the end of last week. Well, we're going back to October 8th. That's pretty far back. Really lag. The holiday messes up New York State. If you notice here, they didn't even start the new week yet. Hopefully that will happen tomorrow. But as of the 10th, October 10th, they had 760 people in the hospital, 72 people in the ICU. Overall, New York State continues to improve at this time. And in Virginia today, overall, it's low to slightly trending up for the various different viruses that they track. COVID-19 is trending down for emergency department visits. Influenza and RSV is stable at this time, and it does look like respiratory illness activity in the central region of Virginia is listed in yellow, which is moderate at this time. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Tuesday edition of the virus update. Usually this is where I would say we would have another update again tomorrow, but I actually don't know what's going to happen over the next two days. I happen to have a doctor's appointment in the middle of the day tomorrow, which will complicate things, but given I'm going to be doing some research this evening and given I'm going to be working on site this evening, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot to share on the next update, which hopefully will be tomorrow. Uh, Thursday is another day. Thursday may be an out in a wild day. I don't know. I'm actually going to the prescribing doctor tomorrow for my Exolair, which I get again on Thursday. Like I said, and I didn't even plan it this way. It just happened to be when all my appointments are. But I just happened to uh, have my appointments during the law that we're in right now, which now is a great time. If you need to get any medical work done, do it now before the winter wave comes. Alrighty, folks, I will see you again next time. If you enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, 
hit that notification bell up above, share this video with anyone you know, and of course leave your comments down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe and have a fantastic Tuesday evening. Thanks for watching.